Hey, Kevin. What are you doing? What? Hey. This here's Buck. He's... Hey. Uh, yeah, I'm Buck Leach. Uh, I came out from uh, Massachusetts to find out what this guy's all about. You've talked about Pulse before on some of your, uh, on some of your videos, which I must admit that I have seen everyone, and some of them, I still again. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit more for, for us lay people? I, I'll certainly try. So, what is Pulse? Pulse is where the machine will take the, the uh, working amperage, you know, your welding amperage, mm -hmm. and it will literally, uh, you know, you will, you will click the finger control, or you will step on the foot pedal, and you will literally get a spike from zero up to your welding amperage, weld, and then it will drop back down to whatever you set it to, or all the way to zero again. And it, it does it in millions or milliseconds. I mean, you know, very, very quick. <laughs> very fast. You can set it to do it, you know, as, as slow as once every couple of seconds. But why would you want it to go slow or fast? Very good question. Okay. It depends on the thickness of the metal, mm -hmm. the type of metal, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I've, I've used pulse when I'm like welding overhead mm -hmm. to make the puddle freeze a little quicker. Wow. Oh, okay. 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 And, yeah, and, and, make perfect sense. And, and, you know, a lot of it is experience. A lot of it is playing and learning. Yeah. You know, a lot of it is figuring out what the controls on the machine will do. That's a big one right there. Okay. But you know, like I said, you can you can get the machine to pulse, weld, drop down, give it a second to cool, yeah. give it a certain okay. amount of time yeah. to cool off, pulse back up again, and do it some more. Okay, so what I was saying was, you can, you know, figure zero volts, and when your pulse spikes up to, let's say, 100 volts, mm -hmm. and then drops back down to a negative, mm -hmm. and then back up to positive again. So when it gets down at the bottom, that's where it, the energy is not going into the tip of the, uh, the TIG welder, right? Is that the bottom part of the pulse? Well, well or? Th this is actually AC. Oh. You know, this is what AC current actually looks like if you look at it on an oscilloscope. Okay. Okay. The pulse, um, how can I correctly draw that? The pulse would be a pulse up, pulse down. You would get to a lower, you would get to a lower current somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then it would pulse back up again. You know, that, that's kind of what it would look like on AC. Just remember, I'm not an electrician, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm not an electrical engineer. This is what I've read. This is kind of what the what it looked like online when I read it. For DC, all right, you've got zero. You've got a pulse up. You've got your welding amperage mm -hmm. or voltage, depending yeah. on what machine you're using, and a pulse back down, you know, to zero or to whatever you have the machine set at. Mm -hmm. And then it would just simply jump over and pulse back up to your welding amperage, your working amperage, and then pulse back down again, yeah. right? Okay. So it gets hot, it gets cold, you know, and that just gives the metal a chance to cool rather than building up too much heat and blowing through. So what you were saying earlier about welding up above, that seems absolutely wonderful. If you could get that down, you know, where you feel proficient at doing it, such as me, I would oh, like sure. to feel proficient at it. Sure. But I've always been scared to go ahead and weld upside down because the puddle always comes down. It happens, and like I said, it, it can happen anywhere from about oh. one pulse every two seconds. Okay. Up to, I think one machine goes up to 250 pulses a second. Yeah. So yeah. fast that you hear it, but you can't, but you can't see it. Right, right. You know? That's kind of cool. And, and it just, it all depends on what kind of metal you're working on, what your position is, you know. If you're, when you're doing this for a living, you know, you're out in the, in the, you're out working for a living in a welding shop somewhere. All of this will be spelled out on your blueprints. Mm, yeah. You know, I, I mean, it, it, there's all different parameters that you got to watch. Uh, the the pulse that's only on TIG, or is it on MIG as oh, well? Oh, or, or, yeah, yeah. You know, give me a little bit of understanding right. here because right, the, the, there's you know, TIG. pulse is normally you you you'll normally find it on TIG. And on pretty much all of the TIGs now, you're, you're going to find pulse on there in some form or another. But I also have a MIG. That does pulse. I, as weird as it sounds, I have a TIG here 
that I can make pulse with a stick welder, with an arc welder. Get out of here. And that is so weird. I, I just I screwed up one day and just had the pulse on, yeah. but I was going to stick weld with it. And when I just, I never even looked at the pulse button. I just fired it up and, went, and the darn thing was sitting there pulsing. Now, were you able to weld with that? I mean, yes, can't, yes, what you would can. be the application for that? Not, Not anything that I can think of. <laughs> I don't think, of, I can't think of anything where you would actually use that yeah. you know, out in the real world. But it was fun to sit there and play with the variables on the pulse, yeah. you know, and see what happened to my weld. But stick welding has such a narrow, narrow parameter you know, a working amperage for the yeah. stick, you know, for, for the individual rod, mm -hmm. that you can't have any big variation in it. Yeah. Yeah. But come on over to the machine. Let me show you yeah. a couple of different ways to set them up here. Yeah. This is Everlast, the PowerTig 255 EMP, according to the sticker. Um, yep. It's one of their newer machines. So, you know, on 8 inch, I would run it up around 100 and, 100 and 20, 115 to about 135 amps. So that's where the pulse would come in on on that level, right? Well, right. But then it would be a percentage of. Oh. You know, if I had it set at 125 amps, it would be at a, it would be you know like it said at 50 percent of that 125 amps. Yeah. You know, now these are the you know the newer machines. They all seem to run on percentage. The older machines, you actually set the amperage itself. Okay, okay, that makes sense. But what they found was it's easier just to run everything on percentage. It makes it easier on the computer every time. Yeah. Rather than doing all the all the different uh, all the different amperages and, and levels and what have you. You know, it just makes it easier for the machine. And then you just have to remember it's a percent of rather than you know an actual specific number. Right. Okay? Okay, sorry so, about that. Yes, yeah, no, I just no. wanted to know. Yeah, back to the machine. We've got you know, the pulse frequency, which is how often right. that the pulse is. The AC balance, that's simply because I've got set an AC at the moment. The steel, that doesn't work. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Okay? And then also, AC frequency. You know, again, it's AC welding for like aluminum or magnesium or something like that. And those are other different you know, variables that you can add into the machine. You know, that, that's with the, with the, uh, with the Everlast machine. Yeah. You know, one of the other functions that it has when you're working in AC, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, uh, the advanced pulse, they call it, yeah. they've done something kind of weird where now you've got, you're welding with AC on aluminum or yeah. like magnesium, but in your pulse, you're getting a positive AC to weld, mm -hmm. and then you're getting a negative DC. They're switching back and forth between AC and DC wow. while you're working. That's, that's, that's pretty amazing. That's that's the inverter, that's the computers, that's all the chips inside there. But what they found is you can drop the amperage a lot with the advanced pulse because you're getting so much more power out of that DC spike. Mm -hmm. You know, the AC coming to the to the torch. So like I showed you here, where that, that AC spike is going positive and negative, positive and negative. Yeah. What you're getting with that AC, that positive AC spike, yeah. right? you're getting the cleaning action, where it's, it's cleaning all of the oxide off of the aluminum, getting it ready to weld. But with that DC negative spike, now it's going back the other way. It's going into the metal. <coughs> so you're putting all that power, all that amperage into the metal itself to get it hot. Right. So you can weld it. And then it goes back to AC again to clean some more. So, you know, on, on regular AC, on this 16th, uh, or one, uh, darn it, 16 gauge aluminum, mm -hmm. on regular AC, I would run that machine at about 70 amps. Okay. 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 If I go to the advanced pulse, I turn it down as low as 35 to 40 amps. That's pretty low. Well, but I got all that power coming out of the pulse, okay? And what I find is I don't get any warp. There's no warp because you're not putting all that all that extra heat into it, all that extra power and that could into be it. A big and problem. That could be warping. a big problem oh, with the thin stuff. So really, you know, this is just some 16 gauge. That's not very thin. 
Right. You know, we, we can get updated at the 20 gauge or 22 gauge or 24 gauge. Mm -hmm. This machine, you could actually go over there and get two soda cans and weld those together. That's amazing. Yeah. That is pretty <laughs> So, you know, real world applications, um, anything thin, you know, all your food industry. Wow. You know, all that thin stainless yeah. that they use making these big, you know, commercial kitchens and what have you. Mm. A lot of pulse going on there. You know, <laughs> in the hospitals, all, all the, all the, you know, the, the stuff it's that they do in there. type of animal, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, the totally is just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's got a scientific right. as everything else. Right, right. You know, and, and then you, you can get off into the, you know, into the aerospace, uh, you know, in, in the aircraft industry or the space industry, you know, where they're trying to save weight. Um, you know, your race cars, you know, your, your car yeah. industry, again, trying to save weight, things are getting thinner. That's where that pulse is coming in. Well, I'm just, I just think, I thank you, I thank you very much, bro. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. Bye-bye. So, I'm going to go back to work on this. I'll see you guys next time.